Hey everyone, this is Ross, and today I'm finally going to be setting up my new tank. I know it's been a while since I said I would get it, but I finally got it. Um, got this tank off my friend for £10. That's probably about 6 or $7, so it's fairly cheap. Um, and it's a rimless tank. I absolutely love it. Um, it's actually a clear seal tank, which is the type of tank that I usually use. Um, this tank is a clear seal, as you can see. And it's a, a good quality brand. I mean, I've never had any leak. Um, and they usually come with this kind of ugly um, guard up here. It doesn't look very nice. You can actually take that off because it doesn't support the aquarium in any way. Um, but there's a glass guard there and that actually supports the aquarium. Um, so if you take this black guard off, you can see the glass guard and there's loads of silicone and stuff, so it's really ugly. But on this tank, it doesn't have any glass guard because it's so small, there's hardly any pressure involved. So I just took them off, and because they don't support the tank in any way, it's not going to make a difference. So I've got a nice rimless tank, and it's a 4 or 5 gallon, so it should be okay for a fighting fish. And um, yeah, I'm really looking forward to seeing how it'll turn out. Um, for the substrate, I'm using um, Akadama Bonsai Soil. Um, it's otherwise known as Mola Clay. And it's also Kitty Litter. Um, I was recommended it by Bez, M. Bezik on YouTube. And I think Nick has used it as well. I've, I think his channel is Nick's Wet World. I'm not sure about that though, but I just love it. It's a, it's a nice red colour. It's uh, basically a baked clay, so it's kind of like fluorite sand and a mano soil. But I just thought I'd give it a try. So yeah, I've been washing that and the waters went quite clear. Um, for the filter of the tank, I'm going to be using this filter. It's got a little spray bar, a bit of media inside there. And it's 300 litres per hour, so it's not too strong. And hopefully that spray bar should diffuse the flow for the fighting fish. Uh, this is the main piece of wood that's going to go in the tank, some of you might remember that. Uh, my room is in a bit of a mess at the minute, but uh, I can tidy that up. Alright, so once again, today I'll just be putting the substrate in here and the little branch. I won't be planting the tank today, because um, I haven't actually got the plants yet, and I haven't got the light for the tank yet. I'm considering getting the T5 so I can get hair grass and dwarf baby tears. Alright so let's get started. Okay so I've got the substrate in there now and the first thing you'll notice is I put a lot in there and um, it actually slopes up from the front towards the back it's actually really low in the front for foreground plants and it's higher in the back for uh, longer plants like um, Rotella which I'm thinking about getting in here I'm not too sure but I'd like some higher plant in the back um, so yeah, this is the first time I've really had enough substrate um, to make this type of effect, so I just thought I'd give it a go. I think it looks quite nice. Um, it's got a nice earthy colour to the soil, and it's slightly red, so I think that suggests that it's got a bit of iron in. If it has got some iron in, then I should get nice red growth on the plants. Um, I'm going to talk about the supports for a little bit. Um, it's got some brackets underneath, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. And it's also got three pine supports. Uh, the reason why it's got so many supports is because I thought I was getting a bigger tank than this. Because um, me and my friend arranged it over Facebook, so I wasn't sure of exactly how long the tank was, although he did tell us. Um, he just said it's a clear seal, so many inch. And... Um, I didn't really measure but yeah it's okay. Um, if I had actually got the bigger one it would have been quite hard to get my hand over the top so I think I got the better one and it's rimless so yeah it looks quite nice. It's a bit more suited to a fighting fish as well. Um, so yeah I've got the substrate in now. Next thing I'm going to do is put in the wood and after that I might put in some rocks. Okay so I've got the wood and the rocks in the tank now. And that's pretty much it. That's all the aquascaping I'm really going to do. 
Um, it only took about five minutes to put it all in. Um, and I can't really do much more because I haven't got any plants at the minute. But uh, next week I should be getting some plants. And I'm thinking about getting a T5 light. So I'll make a few videos on that. I'm also going to be getting some Pogo Steam and Hell Ferry. Uh, which is a small little twisty plant that I used to have in the 15 gallon on the right hand side if you'll remember I'm going to be planting that around the base of the rocks and around the base of the piece of wood but um, yeah it's starting to come along so now what I'll do I'll just fill it up with water and I'll show you once I've done okay, that ok so the tank's full up there now I've got the filter running uh, the water is slightly cloudy that's just because I disturbed the clay um, but it's actually cleaner than the fluorite sand in that tank which I'm really happy about so yeah I'm looking forward to putting plants in this tank I'm going to leave this tank to cycle uh, for a week and a half to two weeks I'm going to start off the ammonia source by just using some flake food or some bloodworms and I'll put those in they should release the ammonia it'll turn into nitrate and then into nitrate and then it should be ready for the fighting fish um, I'm going to be getting either a T8 or a T5 light. I'm going to be mounting it on there, on the top, so I can access the tank easily. I'm thinking about getting some Rigia Flutians. It's like a moss for this little branch. I'm going to get lots of carbon plants and maybe some Rotel on the back. Um, so yeah, I think it's looking really nice. I'm going to give you a few facts about this clay. Um, molar clay is found 3 meters deep below Japanese forests, although this one is taken from European forests. Um, they then dig it out, it's 3 meters below. Um, they dry it out, they then bake it to kill off any diseases and parasites. And it also hardens it. They then break it up into small pieces and it goes for sale. So that's basically it, so it's packed full of nutrients and it actually pulls nutrients out of the water column so it's not ideal for plants like java fern or anubias that rely on nutrients from the water column and it absorbs those nutrients and makes them available for plant roots so i hope you like this video if you did then please leave a nice comment telling us what you think please like the video and please subscribe thanks for watching bye